This is the homework for 346, 347, and 350. In problem 346, you need to create an XY table using at least eight points from the graph at the right. So this was the given graph. You also need to write the rule for the pattern in the table. To get the points from the given graph, we can start negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 on the x, negative 1 on the y-axis. So negative 4, negative 1. You can find another point, negative 1 negative 2, negative 3 on the x-axis, and 0 on the y. We're not going either up or down. So negative 3, comma, 0. Kept doing that until I had 8 points. And I completed my table. These are my x values. These are my y values. Now we need to create the rule. Well, this value is our y-intercept, the point that intersects the y-axis. 0 on the x, 1, 2, 3 on the y. Because when x equals 0, y equals 3. If I look at my table, I have it right here. 0 on the x, y on 3 on the y. If I look at the rate of change, we can see that it's a constant rate of change for every 1 on the x, 1 on the y. You can see that in the graph as well. One on the y, one on the x. If we look at the table, we can see that each value, we have x and we add 3 to it. x, which is negative 4, plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 3 plus 3 is zero. And we can see we're using this rule that I created. Zero plus three is three. One on, for the x plus three equals four. So my rule works for every input value I have here. Just because it works for one doesn't mean that's going to work for all. So it's important for you to check several of your input values and you get the correct output value. For 347 A and B, I needed to create a table of X and Y values for each given role. I chose several negative values and positive values and zero. Negative two, if I substitute in for x, negative two multiplied by negative two is positive four plus seven equals 11. We'll choose zero for the value of x. Negative two multiplied by zero is zero plus seven equals seven. If x equals 2, negative 2 multiplied by 2 is negative 4 plus 7 equals positive 3. Now I'm going to take these values and plot them on the graph. Negative 2, comma, 11. Negative 1, comma, 9. 0 on the x, 7 on the y. 1, 5, 
and 2, comma 3. You can see for the scaling, I chose to go by 2s. If I went by 1s, my numbers would be almost off the paper. So I decided to scale it by 2s. And I also did that for the x values. For problem 347b, I have the rule y equals 11x. I again chose several negative numbers and positive numbers and zero. If x has the value of negative 2, I substitute x with negative 2. 11 multiplied by negative 2 equals negative 22. Remember, a positive number multiplied by a negative number will equal a negative. 0 for x. 11 multiplied by 0 equals 0. If x has the value of 2, 11 multiplied by 2 equals 22. And now I go ahead and plot the points on the graph from the values in the table. Negative 2 and negative 22. Negative 2 and negative 22. If you look, I scaled this differently from the previous problem. On the x-axis, I went by 1s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On the y-axis, I went by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. If I went by 1s, scaling the y-axis, I would have to use the whole paper. So I decided to go by 5s. You can also see that when I was plotting this, I have two points here. I did that accidentally, but when I was plotting my points, I saw that it wasn't going in a line at a constant rate, and I saw that I made an error. So remember, when you're doing equations like this, if it has a constant rate of change, they will be on a line. And if you have points that are not on the line, go back and double check to make sure that you didn't make an error. On problem 3-50, you have an equation that you need to simplify and solve for the variable. We have 2x minus 7 equals negative 2x plus 1. We want to get the variable to the side that has more. We have two negative x's and two positives. So I'm going to bring the x's to the left side. This will keep us from having to divide by a negative at the end. So the inverse property of subtraction is addition. So we add 2x to both sides. 2x plus 2x is 4x. Still don't have x by itself. We need to get rid of the negative 7. So we do the inverse property of subtraction, which is addition. And we add 7 to both sides. This created a 0 pair. 1 plus 7 is 8. Now we have 4x equals 8. Inverse property of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. This gives us the giant 1, the identity property of multiplication. 1 multiplied by x equals x. 4, 8 divided by 4 equals 2. When you have an equation, it's always a good idea to substitute your x value back into the equation and check to make sure it's, it's true because the left side should equal the right side. So if we know that x equals 2, we could substitute it back on both sides of the equation. And so now we have 2 multiplied by 2, which is 4, minus 7. Negative 2 multiplied by 2 is negative 4, plus 1. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. 
negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So negative 3 does equal negative 3. So our value for x was correct.